Welcome to Chewing the Cud with Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Rowe. And I said, I'll play the Willy Banjo, but I'm not doing the bum tit tit. It's not what I've heard. Mm -hmm. What have you got for us today, Mike? Well, today I have a story about a childhood snack that's causing quite a kerfuffle. And then we have a game that you can play along with at home. And then we get all scientific in that science that is. But on screen now, you can see our social media contact info. Just look for at the Cud TV. And as names of people who've dropped us a quick line go along the bottom of the screen, we go over to Lee and the showbiz. Celebrities, they like a little bit of freshening, don't they? A little bit of freshening, a bit of, bit of plastic surgery. Oh, freshening. Freshening. Not freshening. Not freshening. I thought you meant as in they had a stinky, stinky taint. Stinky tape. Well, they probably do, Stinky and they probably tape. need that freshening Fresh. as well. Freshening, yeah. facial freshening. But they don't like to talk about it. No. No. Even when it's clear that they've had their skin stretched so tight that... They look like my... <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um, <laughs> anyway. Once... A sort of mental image now, yeah. Um, so one celebrity has, has, has opened up about... The plastic surgery <laughs> okay. that they have had. Um, Ariana Grande, mm. she she's fessed up about um, the stuff that she's had done to her boat race, um, which is, some people say very brave. Some people say, well, who cares? Mm -hmm. um, you're you're twelve. What could you possibly have had done to your face? Um, all right, so she's doing this. So this is Vogue's Beauty Secret YouTube series. So mm. they're inviting celebrities to go on, put the makeup on, and go, yeah, look at me. This um, is how I put my makeup this on. This is how I put my tut on. Um, usually, it's their own brand that they're vlogging, they're putting it on. Anyway, so she's basically kind of been talking about how from um, a very young age, what are you laughing at? She's got to say, she's going to share. This is the brand of bulldog clip I use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Vaseline that I smear over my face. Um, lenses, it's just easier. Yeah, well, so she, I mean, she's been in the public eye since she was a, a little kid. Mm -hmm. um, so she's, she's done all sorts of uh, stuff through the years. Um, but she's kind of talking about how her relationship with beauty, relationship with beauty, mm -hmm. mm, has changed. Especially because she started so young, she said. Um, towards the end of her makeup tutorial, she kind of said that, do you know what, I've actually had a lot of stuff done to my face. Okay. Um, Who so, hasn't? Looked? Well, I we call had, it a weekend. I haven't had anything done to my face. Not not surgically. I haven't. I'm too scared to have anything like that done. My whole cheekbones hang off my body. Your whole cheekbones hang off your body. <laughs> <laughs> that my was body right. Hangs off, off my, my cheekbones. cheekbones. Yeah. They're very uh, strong. <laughs> so she went on to confess that she's gotten cosmetic work surgery done in the past, but stopped in 2018 when she was five. Um, so, yeah. So she says, full transparency, as a beauty person, I've had a ton of lip filler over the years mm -hmm. and Botox. I stopped in 2018 because I felt so too much like I was hiding, you know? Um... Then she had a little bit of a boo-hoo on oh. screen. Um, I didn't expect to get emotional. Uh, I stopped getting fillers and Botox, and maybe I'll start again one day. But teach her and whatever makes you feel beautiful, I do support it. Um, there's, we've got a picture. There's like, I mean, the woman's probably 30. Mm -hmm. She doesn't really need to have had any surgery. She didn't need to have any done, but she's, her face has changed shape. With with natural ageing, but I think... Th I th think there's more than ageing that's happened there. Well, she's admitted I've had a face full of Botox yeah, and yeah. I've had half a cow injected into my face, my lips. So, you know, it's a bit sad, really, that they... Very sad. Um, it, but I suppose it's kind of, it's almost a bit like um, the guy from Heartstopper that we spoke about who felt that he needed to bulk himself Kit, up. Kit Connor. Kit Connor, yeah, because you have posted something on your wall. Um, kind of felt that... It's not in the 1990s in the Heat magazine. Framed, tastefully. <laughs> Spotlit. <laughs> Thinking. Yeah, from yeah. above, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, if I, I, I don't really have a problem. If you want to do surgery and that kind of procedures and stuff, yeah. go ahead and do it. That's fine, but don't complain. Don't complain. Don't pretend you've not done it. Yeah. Right, so if I came in with a full head of hair one day, right, and you tugged it and it bled because I had plugs, right? I wouldn't be able to say, oh, no, it just grew back overnight. I took this magic formula. Yeah. It's like, oh, I've, I've rubbed in the, the 
placenta of an unborn gibbon into the mascal. Yeah. Thing, it got better. It's like you clearly had plugs, Mike. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a really obvious thing to have done. Yeah, but most surgery is obvious. Yeah, unless, you know, they kind of say the best surgery or treatment is that you look like you've come from a, back from a really relaxing holiday. Yeah. Not... That really your, your, holiday your in face Turkey, looks like an ass. Where you've spent a couple of grand and got new teeth. Yeah, and, <laughs> and when you smile, people go blind. Yeah, that kind of stuff. But you know, good, good for Ariana Grande. Yeah. Anyway, don't care, but good for her. We don't care, but do but good. Yeah. Um, so, Big Brother's coming back. We've spoken about this before. But Rylan Clark, mm -hmm. um, he's admitted that he has been devastated uh -huh. uh, that he's not going to be part of the new show in any way at all. So if you remember back in, I think it was like 2012. Mm -hmm. So X Factor was 2012 and then 2013, he won Celebrity Big Brother, which he's got a picture of him here. A massive, massive Celebrity Big Brother fan mm -hmm. to the extent that he's had a diary room built in his house okay. with a chair that um, that he stole from one of the... the um, uh, episode seasons or whatever they, that the uh, uh, I don't know what he does in there. I don't know if he just goes and talks to himself. I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> only fans. Ah, uh, okay. So he went on after winning it. He did Big Brother's bit on the side mm -hmm. until 2018, and then it came to an end in Channel Five. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was always kind of like, oh, it should come back. It should come back. And when it was announced that he it come back, he. Um, Egoistically said, "Well, I'm going to be. It. They're going to ask me to do it, and they haven't. So they've asked. They've asked um, uh, AJ Dudu, mm -hmm. who I like. AJ Dudu, I like AJ, um, and Marcus Bentley, who I'm not 100 percent sure about who he is. Um, who is he? Who is who he? Is he? Um, but yeah, so he's he's come on to kind of say. I mean, for the past five years that it's been off air, I have been very vocal saying it should come back. It, in my eyes, it was and still is the best reality show out there. Mm -hmm. I suppose naively." And stupidly, to a point, I just thought, I'd been there for six, nearly seven years. You've been to my house. You've said I've got a diary room. You're going to give me a job. And they haven't. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's, he's butthurt that they um, are not, not, not using him in any way, uh, shape or form. Yeah. However, he probably will be watching it as, as and you know. The, th the thing is, he's made, he's made a slight tactical error there. He said it's the best reality show ever made. Okay. He's obviously never seen the Anna Nicole Smith show. But that was car crash TV. That was not reality in a good way. It was reality in a good way. But she was problems. So she had, but when you watch the, like, hear about the stories behind it, that was a, an act she was putting on a lot of the time. Mm. There were some times where she wasn't, yeah. right? But a lot of it was like the, the smart, dumb blonde thing. I was more a, um, uh, the good, the best, or good life with, um, Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton. Where she should have stopped after the first one. Yeah, and they didn't. And, they and I also stopping. really enjoyed the, the very early seasons of MTV's Real World. Seattle. I'm that old that I can remember Is that. Seattle the first one? It's, yeah, Seattle or San Francisco. San Francisco was the first one. Seattle was the second one. Anyway. So, uh, any other shows that you think should come back? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, there was one set in Manchester um, and it had the M people theme tune, na, 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 coming home, du, du, and it was very much like oh, real world, things. Um, but with young people kind of looking for jobs and stuff. That was interesting. Mm. I remember that one? It was on BBC Two. I don't really watch BBC Two that much. Oh, sorry. Okay. Anyway, let's get on with the last bit. Let's not. Let's not. Let's cut it because you've got th you've got fifty seconds. I've got fifty seconds. Melby's getting married, and Posh Spice <laughs> is going to design a dress for her. Oh, okay. And it's all happy. And she's also getting married in uh, Buckingham Palace or somewhere. Paul St. Paul's Cathedral. Because apparently when you get an MBE... Yeah, you can. You can do that. Why, why have they appeared on screen? <laughs> <laughs> because you're watching. rushing the gallery. Because you're telling the gallery, come on, let's move <laughs> it. Let's get through. So there she is with Posh. Coincidentally, at her MBE, where who Posh gave her a frock. Uh, and now apparently... That looks like she's wearing a T-shirt to me. That's one of her dresses. What's one of Victoria Posh's... Is that it? That's it. I would have expected something better. Her boyfriend's hot, though. There's and Mel B, I there's have to say, well, there's a gap, yeah. There's a gap. I mean, I'm good for her. But that... I wish I could get away with a gap. <laughs> Thigh gap. Um, <laughs> she, whatever she's done, it's good. I, th I think that's just her natural and a bit of airbrushing. Well, I'm all for that. 
Anyway, that's the end of this week's Showbiz News. Thanks for that, Lee. Always nice to see you can cram something in in 20 seconds. Entirely welcome. Mm, yeah. Mm. Stick around, because after this, it's Mike and the buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's get ready to find the inheads of the internet as it's Mike and the Buzz. Take my. <laughs> That's a lie. It's not Keep that. Keep it. Huh? Keep your life. Keep it. Whatever's left of it. Rattled. Um, influences. Oh, straight with a drop of face there. Do you not like an influencer? Anybody. Anybody. Absolutely anybody. Who describes themselves as an influencer needs... The floor actually wobbled then. I know, but that's because the rage is strong. Needs to be put on a plane, flown across the ocean, and then in the middle of the ocean, pushed out. That's what needs to happen with an influencer. Influence. That's just, con that's just content, surely. No, take all the things off them. <laughs> They're going out going, oh my God, guys, it's me. I'm just falling from the plane out the sky. Influence my arse. Anyway, go on, carry on. Well, um, an influencer has been caught crying at a supermarket as no one would pay for their shopping. <laughs> what? What's, what did I... Carry on. <laughs> So she walked, she walked over to people and said, like, said, well, I've bought my shopping. Would you like to pay for it? And people were going, no, thanks. That's all I was going. And all the people were going, no, I want to pay for my own. I don't really want to pay for yours. Um, she thought that people would be ecstatic to be able to pay for her shopping. Because she's realized, pretty. Once they realised it was her. But nobody knows who she is. Who is she? Who is she? She's an influencer. I'm not giving her a name. She, everybody should know who she is. Because, because she's, she's influencer. that She's that well-known. She is an influencer. Okay. But she live-streamed it. Did she... <laughs> so she was live-streaming it and people were going, nah, you're all right. You're all right, love. No, don't know who you are. Pay for your own shopping. Yeah. So in a, in a, a vain attempt to, to get back some, some credibility, she abandoned her shopping, allowing the, the shopkeepers to put it away okay. for her. Um, and instead bought lots of pasta and gave it to the food bank instead. Is she from this country? Mm-hmm. Thoughts, feelings? I don't have any. Thoughts or feelings? About <laughs> this. No, no anger? There is much anger, but I'm trying to quell it because if it starts, I don't know when it will ever start. Shall we start it and see what happens? I don't want to. <laughs> I just, you know, the audacity, the audacity, oh, see, it's got, it's <laughs> that, it happens. The sheer audacity of somebody who does <laughs> all for a job to go somewhere and say to people, will you pay for my shopping because I'm an influencer? Mm -hmm. No, I, what I'll pay for is a lighter fluid that I'm going to buy and set fire to your shopping. We can't do that because it's, it's not hers at that point in time because she's not paid for it. Oh, okay. I just, I just don't, I just don't know. Yeah. And then just buy a bit of pasta, and I bet it wasn't the good past, good range pasta, but it was budget range pasta. Well, well food banks now say, say to people, please stop giving us pasta, because that's what everybody buys. Yeah. The food banks, they go, oh, pasta, that'll do, that'll do. There's no, don't meal sauce, just bags of pasta. Apparently she bought some sauces as well. Did she? Oh, yeah. how kind. Oh, I know. Well, um, you know, get in the bin. Yeah, get in the bin. And if you are going to go to a food bank, they'll probably have a list up of what they're looking for and what they're short of. Mm. It's normally feminine hygiene products as well. So if you are looking at giving to a food bank, think before you go, oh, pasta will do. Make sure it's decent stuff. Um, but oh, I went a bit preachy there, didn't I? You did, didn't I you? I did, yeah. <laughs> You're just getting rageful. I'm getting a bit, you know, nice. Um, <laughs> Tin salmon. Tin salmon. Mm. Mm. It's very, um, I always... <laughs> <laughs> no, just wait for it. I always find food banks a little bit school harvest festival. Okay. You know, remember when you when they used to bring a tin in mm -hmm. and there's like tin of, of boiled potatoes. What's all that about? Boiled potatoes in a tin. In Who enjoys those? The people in the war, obviously. Yeah. Um, so to be fair, when I was living on a very tight budget, 
right, tinned potatoes I did buy. Did you? Because that's what I could afford. Did you, did you, how did you prepare them? Boiled them. You boiled them? Mm hmm Were they nice? Were they tasty? Not really. No, put them in the oven and roast them, pretend they were knocky. That's the most middle-class patronising statement I've said. <laughs> <laughs> Have you started voting Tory? <laughs> <laughs> Could you not just pretend they're knocky? Pretend they're knocky, you know. <laughs> oh, it's so sad for you. <laughs> Put them in the air fryer. Why have I got Liverpool? Put know. them in the air fryer. <laughs> and blast them. Um. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's move on. Let's move on. Um... When you were a child, did you have a petit falou? A petit falou? Petit falou. Uh, the tiny yoghurts? Tiny, tiny yoghurts, yeah. I had several. <laughs> hundred. Several hundred. I preferred, because mm. there was petit falou, no, the, uh, the fruit ones. The petit falou, yeah. Yeah, and then there was the chocolate ones and the white oh. chocolate ones. Guess which ones I like those? White chocolate ones. But all of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, <laughs> is the, this is the shock horror that they're not yoghurt. They're fromage frais. They're made from cheese. From Marsh Frey? Yeah, cheese. Yeah. Why is that Why is that a shock? Because people have been thinking, for, lots of people just thought they were yoghurts. Like you described them as a yoghurt. But I know yogurts. they were from Marsh Frey, which is yeah. cheese. Which is cheese, yeah. Well, a lot of people didn't know that. Which people? Like, Stupid people. <laughs> <laughs> people that refer to them as yoghurts. Millennial. As you did moments but ago. But I, I say yoghurt, uh -huh. but I know that they're made out of, of from Marsh Frey, which is cheese. Yeah. Why is this a story? Because people have been shocked because they thought it was all yoghurt. Why? So, so they've been going, oh, I'm going to have a petit falou. Oh, my God, it's cheese. And then going, ooh. <laughs> it and, was, yeah. Okay. This is where we are at the internet. This is where we're at the level of the internet This is nowadays. the level of the internet nowadays. People are shocked at the ingredients of food. <laughs> yeah, people are shocked by something they've been eating for years and not realising that oh. what they thought it was isn't quite the same oh, as what it, it was. Oh, has it made them sad? Does it turn them off them? No. 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 It's still delicious. Okay. But they're cheeses. Yeah. But people have been genuinely shocked that they're, they're flavoured cheese rather than yoghurt. Well, some people might need to have a little look at themselves in the mirror while they're eating a delicious fromage fray and go, Why did you have to read that off the screen? <laughs> <laughs> a delicious fromage, fromage fray. <laughs> uh, and just have a little word with themselves and go, Is this the kind of person I want to be? And if it's yes, get in the bin. If it's no, <laughs> just enjoy your yog yog and get on with life. But it's not yog yog, it's cheese cheese. Well, you're not going to say cheese cheese, are you? You're going to say yog yog because it's in all oh, intents and purposes. Oh, I don't know what I don't know what we're talking about anymore. <laughs> and if you're lost in life, just as Lee is, feel free to share with us at the Good TV. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Now, <laughs> we both are pet people. Hmm. Like, which means that we have pets rather than we go around having our heads belly scratched. Yeah. Um, do you think there's, what do you think the most unusual pet could possibly be? A tapeworm. A tapeworm? Mm. Inside or in somebody else? Um, well, you know, either or, really. Um, I mean, if it's inside yourself, <laughs> it's just yours, isn't it? Or if it's in somebody else, um, it's for everybody. <laughs> But it'd have to be someone that you knew. You couldn't, like, just pop a tapeworm into somebody that right, ran them in the street. No. Because otherwise, belly scratches and stuff would be a bit weird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is about a, a gentleman who has a pet that he takes everywhere. What does he take? He, a pet, his pet everywhere. His pet. Right? Okay. Even to the dentist. Okay. What do you think his pet might be? It's going to be something absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? Like what? Like a cockroach or something like that. No. Bigger than a cockroach. We're we talking a mammal. No. We're talking an insect, aren't we? We're talking a bird. Oh, a parrot. Um, an eagle. A turkey. <laughs> turkey, not so far off when I was going to say ostrich. Not OK, look, yeah. Look at his stupid face. It's a turkey. It can't help looking like that. <laughs> you mean the guy. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> this is... This is Dave Brooker and his pet two-year-old turkey, T2. T2 turkey. T2. No, just T2. It's called Turkey 2 because it's his second one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did he, did, did, it, what, did, he, did he eat the first one? Died. Then did he eat it? It doesn't say. I think he ate it. He's not you. <laughs> Free turkey there. 
Um, Christmas. Is he a farmer? He's not a farmer. No. No. Is he American? He's English. Is he? And he goes to the dentist with him. Even the dentist. He goes shopping with it. He goes everywhere with him. Is it a... <laughs> Is it one of those help animals? Is it classed as one of those? An emotional support animal. Yes. Let me see if he's an emotional support because animal. If it's not, then you ain't going to be bringing that turkey in the supermarket. Don't be bringing it in my doctor's surgery. No, no, it doesn't say it's an emotional no. support animal. He has raised it from a chick. Okay. Um, and she's like my child, is what Dave says. What's with the face? <laughs> what were you thinking? Nothing, then? I'm not saying anything. Go on, say it. He f <laughs> don't know. <laughs> He's not Yuri. He f not Yuri that Tukalov. turkey. <laughs> He's like his child. Okay. Well, You're I hope they're both very happy. <laughs> um, you genuinely think that he's. I don't think he's. I don't think he's. <laughs> you don't think he's well? Uh, no. No. I don't think that there is a. The, but you know, who's to say, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. If you think a turkey. Is it is a, van, a valid pet? Go for it. Well, I hope they're very happy together. I'm sure they will be very happy together mm. for a very long time or until Christmas. Christmas. And that's all from the buzz this week. Thank you, Mike. Always nice to know that somebody's getting a gobble around here. <laughs> Stay with us, because coming up after this, we have our game of the week. You're watching Chewing the Cud. This week we are playing Lazy Susan's Questions Roulette. And this is for the man who one night came into the studio and sat on this very chair that I'm sat on. I thought I could smell ammonia. Ooh. Off you pop. Jizz monkey. Game of the Week. So Mike is going to spin the roulette. It's going to land on a topic. It's going to ask me a question. I'm going to answer it. That will be repeated until um, the end of time. Ready, spinning away. Ooh, rock and pop. <sighs> We're keeping you up, love. Huh? We're keeping you up. Oh, you are. Oh, sorry about that. I'm not sorry at all. Which band, that's which band, but had a 2002, which is the same forward as backwards, hit with She Will Be Loved. Cause she will Maroon 5. Dogs up and down the country complaining. <laughs> uh, it was Maroon 5, yes, um, well done. Yeah. Next one. Nineties. You remember a lot of the nineties, don't you? I'm wearing a necklace that says nineties baby. Nineties baby. Because you are how old in the nineties? 90. 90. We were 90, 30 years ago. Yes. I can believe that. Who had a hit with the 1999 hit, Mambo No. 5? A little bit of boo-boo, doo-doo-boo. A little bit of bada do ba ba Um. Nah. Nah. But it went like that at the end. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> Why were you doing your Jackie Stallone impression? No, it did. It went, nah. Yeah. Uh, Mambo number five by Louis Baker. So close. Lou Baker. I have to take your first answer, I'm sorry. Oh, it's between 90s and soundtracks, so I'm going to go for Hum That Tune. You ready? No. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 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 and another. <laughs> it's uh, that will be um, Harold Faltmeyer and Axel F. It is indeed. Yeah, well done. Oh God, you've made it. You kicked it <laughs> off again. Rock and pop. Formed in the year 2000, Matt Willis, James Bourne and Chuck... Oh, f off. Why, why was that reaction? Formed 23 years ago, uh -huh. Matt Willis, James Bourne and Charlie Simpson are members of which pop band? Busted. Busted are 20 f 
I'm three years old. Yeah. I feel old. And so you should. Not as old as you, granted. I didn't like Busted. Did you not? No. I didn't care for it. They were a poor man's McFly. Yeah. Or was it the other way around? Ooh, hum that tune. <laughs> okay. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it? Do, do, wherever you may be, I am the lord of the dance at Hiena. Do, 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 wherever you may be. Na, 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 na. Very similar. It was All the Small Things by Blink-182. Oh, OK. Which is very similar. It's got a similar melody. It's the same sort of idea. Yeah. 90s. Who had a hit in 1990 with You Can't Touch This? You can't touch this. Do, 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 do. Can't touch this. Um, MC Hammer. It was MC Hammer, yes. Well done, you. And his big pants. Parachute pants, I believe they were called. Mmm. Mmm. Soundtracks again. What movie features the theme song Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls? That's a sexy face. Um, I don't know. Somewhat miserable, I would imagine. City of Angels was the answer. I don't know it. No, of course not. Seminal work of the early 90s. It was, what was it? Was it about, um, was it Meg Ryan? It was Meg Ryan, yeah. In the arms of an angel, I will fly to you. That wasn't it. Wasn't you right? <laughs> anyway, which rapper featured on Katy Perry's 2010 hit California Girls? That would have been, um, 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 let's just do, do, be, do. The weed aficionado, Snoop Doggy Dog. It was indeed Snoop Dogg. Well done, you. Snoop Dogg in the hat. That wasn't one of his songs. That was not one of his. I don't know what songs he did. No. I'm Snoop Doggy Dog, which is the same. <laughs> Just done. Oh, hum that tune. Oh, great. I'm doing the wrong song there. Mm. I got confused. Did you? I did. Dizzy Magin, you there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Whitney Houston uh -huh. with uh -huh. I Have Nothing. It is Whitney Houston with I Have Nothing. <laughs> well done, you. Rock and pop. Which English rock star is known as the Prince of Darkness? Oh, the Prince of Darkness. Ooh. Is it, is it Ozzy Osbourne? It's not Ozzy Osbourne. It is, you liar. <laughs> Just because the gallery said it in your ear. I knew it was that it anyway before course I said you did. it. Of course you did. I did. Yes, it, it was Ozzy Osbourne. Dirty cheater. Hum that tune. You're not going to get this one. And if you do, you have to question your life. Um. Is that it? That's all I know of the song. Doobie 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 doo. Yeah. 
Doo do do be do be do. No, I don't know it. Do be do do. Yummy by Justin Bieber. No. What do you mean no? No, I wouldn't have known that no, anyway. No, good. That's that's a good thing. Yummy. Yummy. By Justin Bieber. Yummy, 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 I got love in my tummy. Because I've swallowed several loads. <laughs> Which Disney movie features the song, I wanna be like you, ooh, ooh. I wanna be like you, ooh, ooh. Jungle Book. I wanna walk like you, talk like you do. You do, you do, be do. do. Have I not been cancelled? Huh? Have I not been cancelled? Why has it been cancelled? Well, they cancel everything though, don't they? I think it's got one is about some of the imagery maybe of its time. Mm. But yeah, rock and pop. <laughs> Who featured in Ariana Grande's 2016 song Side to Side? Don't know. Nicki Minaj. Mister, I'm not even gonna try anymore. I, I, yeah. I can tell. Last one. Nineties. Will Smith, Will Smith, rapped about which US city in his 1997 Big Dick style, Willie style. Sorry. Uh, which what? Well, which city? Which, what's there? Uh? uh, what a? Eh? Uh? What a? Eh? I think that would have been. Welcome to Miami. No. Do 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 Miami. No. It was. No. The name of the song was Miami, not Welcome to Miami. Oh, you dirty bitch. Don't you use my, my grinder name at me. That's <sighs> enough there, Ward. Great. Okay, stay with us, because after this, it's that science that is. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now it's time we learn something interesting in the name of science. It's Mike, and that's science that is. That's science that is. Milk alternatives. Do you enjoy a milk alternatively? Um, occasionally I'll have a little bit of almond milk. Okay. Sometimes a little bit of coconut. Okay, so you like a nut milk? I do enjoy nut milk. Well, that's good, because guess what we're doing today? I'd lost that we're going to be making nut milk. We are going to be milking nuts. Oh. Yes, um, which is a little bit easier than you'd think, because, you know, you'd have to find the teeth and squeeze. Um, and the way that you, you do this is basically you emulsify them. Do you? Yeah. Um, now, I didn't go for almond nuts. I went for mixed nuts. Is that a possibility? It is a possibility when you're making your own nut milk because when you're using your own nuts, you can go any way you like. You can milk them for all you like. All you want, all you deserve. Um, but I'm not just going to milk nuts. Oh no, I'm going to milk the much maligned and, and hated, um, on the bottom, sweet corn. What? I'm going to make sweet corn milk. Uh. What do you mean, uh, you, have you tried it? That's disgusting. It's not disgusting, it's lovely. Cream of, uh, cream of corn. <laughs> not cream of corn. Right, this is this is milk made from corn. So in front of you, you have um, some of my nuts. Is it these th floated in something? So what I, what, with nuts, you have to soak them first. Okay. okay. Um, so they've been soaking for some time, steeping almost in their own juices um, to make them big and plump nuts. Nut juices. Yes. Um, so you also have a glass chalice. I do. Oh. Um, which your your blend, hand blender should fit into carefully. It does, Mike. Lovely, wonderful. You've inserted your tip. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to empty the contents of your cup, nuts and fluid, okay? Maybe not all of it straight away, but just some of it, so you can get a blend on. You might need to finger your nuts in a little bit. I might need to what? Finger your nuts in a little bit. Give them no, they've all gone in. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to do the same for my sweet corn. Only because sweet corn, when it comes in a tin, it's quite dry. Uh, so I'm going to have to just, just pop my, my sweet corn. There's a little bit of fluid in there. Uh, sweet corn milk. Sweet corn milk. Uh, oh, corn milk uh, do, do you not enjoy sweet corn? I like sweet corn. 
Hey. But I, don't, I would not enjoy sweet corn milk. I don't know, I've not tried it yet. All right, so some sweet corn in there, and then I just need a little bit more fluid. And I also have a stick blender, and you just want to basically blend the living <laughs> out of it. You just, so I just, I just. Let's see if let's see your immerse. sweet corn milk first. Go. I'm blending away there. Do you want to have a blend? See how you get on? With me nuts. Oh. You've put all the nuts in, haven't you? Yeah, you told me to. I said a bit at a time. Shall I take some out? Take some out, because otherwise the blender won't get any purchase. Some juice back in it. Mm. <laughs> so you probably need all of the fluid. What do you want me to do, Mike? All of the fluid you can, not just a little bit. <sighs> and this is why nut milk is so expensive. Okay, there you mm -hmm. go. There you go, that's better. Is it better to pulse? It's, it's better to, to, to blend and, and up and down. So not ah, pulse, but... Yeah, baby. Making you some nut milk. Oh. You're enjoying yourself too much there, Lee. Okay. So my, mine blended all together quite quickly because, of course, they, they're cooked in, in a can, sweet corns. So. Ugh. It's not finished yet. Okay. Have you done all your nuts? Um, no, no. Do you want? Do I have to put more nuts in? More nuts, yeah, because yeah, you want you want quite a lot of the nuttiness. So in there you've got almonds and walnuts and pecans and cashews. And if you use nothing but peanuts, yeah, you'd make peanut butter. Peanuts. Make peanut butter. Do you have to? Do you have to soak your nuts first? Your peanuts first. You need first? to soak your nuts for quite a while because you need them to be engorged. If you don't engorge them, you have to use a lot more water. Okay, are you done? Do you think it's smooth? It's kind of like a nut milkshake. Like a nut milkshake, yeah. So, so you just we're going to we need to separate them out now. I've not used all my nuts. Okay, then use more, blend more of your nuts if you want to blend more of your nuts. I'm done. Oh. Oh. Did you just put your finger in front of the blades of a hand? No. And it, lift it up and down as you're spinning. What's that the face for? It's making a glopping noise. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, well, it looks there. deeply unpleasant. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to separate that out. You should have with you some tissue. I've got some tissues, yes. Great. Like... Uh, what you want to do is you want to kind of make a little little parcel over the your lip of your cup. Like that, so you can strain your juices. I've only got a paper cup. Yeah, that's okay. Just one tissue or multiple tissues? I'd use a couple. Start to see as the fluid drips out. Okay. Oh, I've got to put the, the flop flop in there then. You want to put your flop in there because you want you want to strain out the solid and the liquid. You know that's disgusting. <laughs> oh. And then what do I do? Just gather just, all the. Just gather it all up so you've got a tight package. Yeah. 
okay, or a sack of nuts if you like. So with your nut sack, gently, very gently, 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 very gently, just squeeze gently. That looks very, very forceful there, Lee. Just very gently, no, very gently. That's... I'm doing it gently! <laughs> Gentler than you're doing it. So barely any pressure. So as you can see, a tiny little drops are coming out of my... There is some drops of shit coming out of the bottom. Which means you've torn your tissue, which means you're doing it too hard. Oh my God! <laughs> so... There we go. And see, I've got sweet corn milk. That's disgusting. How would you know? Because it is. It's just water. It's just like water of the thing. Water of the thing. Oh, it's all splatted. Oh, I'm not doing it anymore. It's not worked. I've got like a... <laughs> I've got like a tiny dribble. You've got a tiny dribble. Okay. Just going to pour mine into... I not to do it anymore. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to pour that into there like that, just so I've got... So I'll pop that out of the way. It smells disgusting. What does? Whatever that is at the bottom of nut my milk. cup. Well, it's just it's mostly nut butter, because you've not... Nut butter. It, nut butter. <laughs> what? Do I, have, do I taste it now? I'd taste it if I were you. Tell me what it tastes like. Don't care for that, Mike. You don't care for... Okay, well, I'm going to try my, my water now. Oh, you dirty filth water. Good. Or oh, just go and buy it already made. You can just buy it ready made, but that's that was actually quite tasty. Nobody drinks... Nobody drinks sweet corn water. What? No, it's sweet corn milk. No, they they, nobody. You don't. You don't. You can't get sweet corn milk in the supermarket. But is that because people like twenty years ago you couldn't get almond milk in the supermarket? Are you trying to invent sweet corn milk? I think I've just invented sweet corn milk. What a freak! And that's science. That is. That's science. That is. Have a go. I don't want it. I'll smell it. Smell it. But I'm not having it. it smells like it smells like a sweet corn juice. <laughs> it smells like sweet and corn. That right. looks like someone's babbed. <laughs> babbed. <laughs> What's a bab? Bab themselves. <laughs> What's a bab? <laughs> I've invented something nutritious. You've invented a shit word. What's babbed? Crap themselves. I say crap. Have you never heard bab them? Oh, bab myself. <laughs> It genuinely does. And believe me, I bab myself quite a lot. I know what it looks like. That's disgusting. Look at that. Ugh. I'm not impressed with that, Mike. You're not? No. Okay. That's almost the end of the show for now. Remember to join us on our social media at The Cud TV. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. <laughs> Babbed. <laughs> Bye. Where's <laughs> Babbed from? Like and it smells like baby shit. It smells like nuts. Doesn't it smell like baby shit?